BYD has been in New Zealand for a year now, and their flagship vehicle from day one has been the BYD Addo 3. Today I'm catching up with Addo 3 owner Matthew Parkin, who I spoke to six months ago about owning the car. I'm finding out how his experience with the Addo 3 has been going over the last six months. Hi, Matthew. Hey, how you going, Adrian? Good, thank you. I guess we'll, uh, I guess we'll start make, just to make sure you have got the car, haven't you? So we don't. So I, we're... I still have the car. Yes, it's a little but, bit dirty, but I've still got it. Yeah, that's that's my question one done. Um, maybe just an overview, just from the what made you actually buy the car in the first place? Because it's still only been a year that the, you know, the BYD yeah. brand has been around. I think it was really good timing, to be honest, because if I saw the price of it now, I maybe wouldn't have bought it. Um, but I got in, you know, I think I got mine at the very start of October. So um, all up after um, rebates, I think it was about $52,000. So th- my budget was fifty. That was yeah. what I wanted to spend on a good EV. At the time, the um, MG was the only option. Um, and I don't know, like, I, I don't know. It just didn't win me over. Um, and so, yeah, so I went with the Addo and still don't regret it. It is the first car that I've owned that um, I still get excited to, to go for a drive and I still go for pointless drives every week, you know, just because I want to go for a drive. So I guess you'd say, so that's sort of is about 10 months then you've had it. Is that about 10 yeah, months? it's coming, it's, it's coming up to that year. I've done 14 and a half thousand K, uh, which is definitely more than my average. Um, and yeah, I think I did quick calculations that would have cost me around forty five hundred dollars in my Outlander that I had yep. prior to the to the EV. Yeah, I guess we might as well just get straight to the costs. So you're you're saving money then, relatively. <clears throat> um, I well, I believe so. I don't actually know. I don't do a lot of um, uh, fast charging. So yep. you know, charge at BP. I don't do a lot of it. It's only when I go for you know drives up to Christchurch or whatever. Um, so the majority, you know, 98% of my charging is done at home with a wall charger. Um, so, you know, to charge it up, depending on how low it is, it generally, you know, any, anything from $5 up to about $9. So it's not, it's not a lot. Oh yeah. So and where, I, where are I, you based? Where you living? Uh, in Dunedin. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it'd be nice if we had some better rates. Uh, it's kind of annoying when you look at some of the rates in the North Island where their power rates can get very cheap, especially that off peak night rate. Um, but you know, I suppose the bonus is that, uh, I believe all the power in the South Island is, um, renewable. So I suppose that's a bonus. It doesn't matter which power company you're with if you're in the South Island, it's renewable. So that's, I suppose a bonus, but it would be nice to get some better rates. Uh, but you know, I'll make a can't note. really complain. Yeah, make a note for the parking. Um, and maybe just what sort of what are the um key pros of the car you'd say, or the you know sort of the key highlights, or maybe the odd exi- surprising highlight even. Uh, the the V two L adapter is is pretty amazing. Like it, it it is it's more than just a car. Uh, it, it 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 does feel like there's just that more to it. You know, it's not just getting from A to B. Um, but the, the V2L adapter is pretty amazing. We haven't really utilized it a lot yet. You know, like we've, we've, we've done tests with it. I've run the washing machine, uh, the, the dryer on it, oh, yeah. um, you know, just to use that through the day and then charge up the car during the night. Um, we've actually just recently uh, got some insets for the windows to cover up all the windows. So we could technically go camping in the car. Um, so we are, we are going to attempt that one. So we've got covers for every window. Um, we'll take out, you know, the take out the air fryer with us and um, and just see what we can do. You know, go for a wee explore somewhere and maybe camp somewhere for the night. Uh, we'll bring a tent as backup, but uh, yeah, it, 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 it's it's it, it'll be fun to 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 try it out. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's the the cheapness is probably you know that's probably my the thing that I love about it is is just either going for a drive or when you've got to actually go anywhere, it just doesn't cost a lot. Um, even the the fast charges, when I factor that, uh, the high rate, and it still comes up a lot cheaper than fuel. And yes, you have to um, wait, but I've not, 
I don't know. Like I just, I that that still hasn't become annoying to me having to stop and charge the car. What's the um, longest queue you've been in? I've not. Look, knock wood. I've not yeah. encountered it not once between really? Dunedin and Christchurch. Um, I've got two two spots that I like to stop at. Um, either the BP Timaru Charger. Um, it it's never. I've never seen another car there ever. Any time I've ever stopped, it's always been completely empty. Or um, the charge net charger in Orari, which is 150 kilowatt dual charge, so two vehicles can charge at the same time, and it's cheap. It's one of the cheapest charge net chargers in um, uh, in the South Island. So um, they're, they're the two spots I like to stop at, and I've never encountered. And because those two stops are within, I think they're within like 20 minutes of each other or 30 minutes. Um, as we're coming from either direction, we will check both. And if one of them's busy, we just go to the other one automatically. So we've not encountered the need to charge. But again, that does come down to the, the range of the um, of the addo that you've got. You know, if a charge is busy, you just go to the next one. There are enough of them along the way. Um, I do feel for, you know, the users who have got like a leaf, for example, where, you know, they, they need to hop between charges yeah i don't really have that issue so i've not encountered any queues yet and i'm not really a confrontation type person so to be honest if there was a queue i'd probably just go on oh, to yeah. the next one because i have the same deal with the free charges um i find they're the ones you get the most hostility from you know and the free charges they're free so um yeah if it's yeah. if it's available i'll jump on it but if it's not yeah, you, you yeah. can't you can't get too upset about it. It's free. It's yeah. going to be busy. Just on the range, what's the uh, what's the actual practical real world driving range? So, I've what's, what's, yeah, it, it, I've I found with that one with uh, I do a lot of short trips. I live in Dunedin, a lot of short trips, a lot of hills, and it's been very cold in winter time. So, um, at first, it was a little bit scary because when I'd go for. Um, by the time it come to the end of the week and I'd want to put the car on charge, the clock had anywhere from 100 to 150 kilometers, and it would be well below 50%. So um, the, mile, the, the, the range was incredibly short, but the problem is for our town driving, we preheat the car a lot. Heat, heat, seated heats, the, the heat pumps on like 28, you know, 28 degrees. Uh, we keep it quite toasty, and I think that's definitely going through a bit of power. The other thing I've noticed is the batteries are cold, um, and while it's cold, um, it obviously can't put out as much. It can't receive as much in. Um, so I've what I've found is if I'm going doing a road trip to Christchurch, the range seems to be uh, pretty standard. You know, we we could make it almost all the way. We have to stop at either Arari or Timaru or. Um, Rolleston to get all the way to Christchurch, just that little bit of a charge near the end. But um, yeah, we've found with those ones, because the car is rolling, the battery is being used, the temp must stay fairly consistent. So the the range becomes normal again. Um, But what I found in Dunedin with the short trips um, is I don't think the battery is ever getting up to a, a, a decent temp. And because of that, it's probably always running at, you know, 10 degrees or, or, or less. That's that's what I believe it is anyway, because every long trip I've done, the range hasn't really dropped as much as I expected it to, especially based on the the need and driving. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and again, because the, oh no, sorry, because I was going to say what's the WLTP? I can't remember off the top. Oh, four twenty. Four twenty is, and in summertime, when in Dunedin, when I was trialing that to see if I could get that figure, um, if I ran it in eco mode, kept climate control off, um, I could actually get more than that quite oh. easily. So, um, you know, and, and even in eco mode, it, after been driving in the car in sport mode for a long period of time, you put it to eco, it feels really slow. But the moment you have to leave a green light um, at an intersection, you realize that even eco mode is still quicker than most ice cars. Um, you know, so it feels slow. But so if I needed to get more range out of it, I, I could, but it, it's not. It just doesn't cost much to uh, to to charge it, and when they bring in road user charges, um, again that's going to be based on kilometers. So um, if the range is bad because uh, you're using all these extra accessories, it's not going to cost money. Like in a car, if you're sitting idling 
and it's using petrol, you're technically paying road user charges for not any kilometer, like for not driving at all. Um, same with if you've got a, 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 you know, like a V8 or a V6 that's going to go through a lot of fuel, uh, you're paying more than your, you're paying more than the fair share of road user charges. So in that regard, I'm not, I'm not too worried. I know that on the, on the open road, I'm going to get decent range. I'm going to be able to get between multiple charging stations. Um, and it, for the city driving, I'm not, I'm not too worried that the range, like I said, the range can be low. It, it feels like it could be as low as 150 K um, the way I personally drive the vehicle, which is very short trips, you know, to the supermarket, to the gym, to, to, to pick up or drop off people. Deneen's not a big city. So no, no drive generally is more than 10 minutes. Uh, for the most part, and and in winter time, the battery is just cold. I had a, uh, I was in Rangiora um, a month or so back, and I had to charge up the car in the morning before going for a drive. So I went to the local BP, but it was a very very frosty morning, and I found when I plugged it in, it would not charge at more than fourteen kilowatts um, for quite some time. It took quite a while before that battery even allowed anything substantial into it. Um, so that was something else I learned too, that on a very cold morning, you're better off getting out on the open road, driving for a bit, warming up the battery, and then stopping somewhere for a charge because it was just so slow to charge while it was really cold battery. Um, but yeah, but, you know, it, it's things that I'm learning about the vehicle a, as I go. And, and it's, you know, I, they're, not, um, they're not the end of the world. You know, I've sort of come to terms with them. They're, they're acceptable for the benefits of the vehicle. Any annoyances with the car? Um, the beeping, the beeping still. Actually, to be honest, I, my brain has phased out most of the beeping in that vehicle now, so I don't really notice it as much. Um, they fixed up the fog. The fog uh, gate the, was the big thing, wasn't it? Fog yeah, the, fo the fog gate was a bad one, especially in Dunedin. Like you, you, I, I, again, short trip to the supermarket. Um, the car would be dry when I left the house, but once I got to the supermarket, shut it off and went inside. By the time I came back, even five, 10 minutes later, every bit of glass in that car was not just fogged up, but it was dripping wet. Wow. Um, so you would have to either leave the car running while in the supermarket or unlock, lock, and then unlock again, or lock it, unlock it, lock it. And that sort of broke whatever programming it had to vent out the condensation, it would break that routine, um, which, you know, so those two things were a little bit annoying, but the last update completely fixed that for me. Now, the moment that update came out, there was a whole new, you know, a whole new group of people that were now getting fogging while driving, which that's definitely a scary situation, but um, I've done a, I've done it, at least one drive to Christchurch since 1.6, and we, we, we haven't noticed that issue at all. Um, so I'm not too sure what what was causing it. The only the only thing I sort of noticed from other people's report of that issue was that they had a lower temperature on their um, on the climate control, and with this EV, with this with the Addo, I found that the temperature it just needs to be higher. You know, any old ice vehicle that I've had 22, 23. Even 21 degrees would be more than enough to keep that cabin at a nice temp. Um, but I found with the Addo, anything below 24, it has a coldness to it and it has a moisture to it. So I'm wondering if the latest fog gate possibly has something to do with the actual temperature. You know, if it gets too low, it starts bringing moisture in. Um, and I watched a video recently on YouTube where uh, the person doing a review of the car had a similar issue while driving and their temperature was low. And so I do wonder whether or not if it's too low, it, it brings moisture into it. But they do have an update coming out to fix it. Um, I've put myself down as a uh, a beta tester, or not a beta tester, but just a pre pre tester. I think they're doing a group of fifty people um, to get that update first. Now I've not had the issue, so I won't be able to comment on that. But um, I'm also hoping they don't make it worse because. I work in the software industry and, you know, it, there's a rule. You sort of, you don't do an update to software unless it's required, unless there's a specific bug or something you're trying to fix. And right now I'm, I'm really happy with the car. Like there's, there's nothing about the software besides the guessometer, you know, the, the actual range meter 
that needs to be fixed. The range meter is the only thing in the car that I wish could be fixed, but it's not the end of the world that it's not, you know, because I've got, there are apps and there are ways to work out your range quite easily just based on the percentage of what's left. Um, and, you know, like a better route planner, for example. Like I use that for every road trip that I do. So, um, but yeah, there's, I don't, I, I'm hoping that the next update doesn't, doesn't break anything because that's that's the issue that every update has come with little issues where they've reverted something or or broken something while trying to fix something else so uh, fingers crossed this next update is all positive hopefully hmm. and um what's the, what's the maintenance is that one every is it yearly the so you do for a check um i think it might actually be yearly yeah so i think it's yearly or 20,000 Ks. Um, I'll need to check. Actually, I don't have a book, but I'll need to check my the, the paperwork that I do have on it. But yeah. um, I remember it's 20,000 K. So I don't know if it's 12 months or 20,000 K. But um, yeah, I will be coming up for that. Um, and I do have one issue that needs to be fixed in the car in that my 3D view, uh, the left hand camera is out of alignment. Um, when I first reported it to BYD in Dunedin, um, the salesperson was like, that, that doesn't sound right. Um, so I ended up going down to the warehouse parking lot so I could park perfectly between some lines and then get some photos of the different 3D images to show how out of skew it was. And um, at, at first I was a little bit concerned. I thought this is going to be, this is going to be a bit of a mirror to get it sorted. You know, it's going to be a bit of a, it's going to take time. It's going to have to send away for a new wing mirror or something, but um, I've seen a couple of people report the same issue in the Facebook group, and there's actually a, a BYD map that goes on the ground around the car. They can use it to recalibrate the cameras. So something I was quite worried about, you know, I thought, oh, man, I'm going to be without the car. It's going to take them days or weeks to actually resolve it. It sounds like it's actually pretty straightforward and something that can be done on the day. So um, I'll either be booking that in prior to the service or just getting them to fix it during the service. Mm. Have you been sort of uh, looking at other EVs in the market, or you? Oh, I, I, I look at all of them. Like yeah. all of them, I, they're they're all exciting. Like every yeah. single one of them. Like it, even even the 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 worst of the lot, they're all still exciting. But um, the Atto, uh, I budgeted that one to do a job, and. You know, there's, I've got no complaints from the vehicle, so I've got no reason to sort of upgrade it or, you know, yeah. shift it out. But the goal is to actually have that thing for six to eight years to try yeah. and maximize the warranty on it. Um, and, you know, if, if all goes well, um, the, the car battery might end up as a house battery down the line. But if I can keep it for eight years, I will pay for a, ma a good majority of the car. So whereas every you know ice vehicle I've ever had, there's always been a loss at the end of it. Um, there is a potential with the Atto to have a very small loss, if if any at all, really, because um, the battery at the end will have a value, and uh, whether I use it or I sell it, it, it hopefully will uh, will just make that difference because it is a good long life battery, being that it is a, a blade battery and uh, LFP, um, it should outlive the car well outlive the car do you know of anyone that's actually sort of sold them in like a retail uh there was someone i don't know if it was in the north island or in australia but someone had actually bought a written off atto and then used the parts to retrofit uh, an old ice vehicle okay. which that's pretty exciting too like i like I, I like the look of some of the older cars but yeah. you know it, it so I could see that being a project, maybe not for me, but, you know, like it, it would be cool to see more people doing that, buying up uh, wrecked EVs and then taking the parts out, chucking them in, you know, an old Holden or an old Supra or a Sleeker or something. And uh, from the outside, it looks petrol, but can play the EV on the inside. And, yeah, it, that, that would be cool to see. As prices come down, we might start to see that happening more. Prices and everything, do you think they're going to keep coming down the price? I don't know. Like, yeah, I, I, um, I'm biased because I've got a, a an Atto, and I also got it at a good price. Um, but I, I do feel there might be a little bit of uh, profiteering going on 
within BYD. And again, you know, that's that's what business is here for. They're here to maximize profits. But yeah. looking at the Dolphin and you look at the Australian price without a grant, you look at it here with a grant. And even when you factor in the grant, Australia is getting a far better deal on that Dolphin, which, um, you know, if I was in if I was in the position of BYD, I would probably try and maximize the profits as well. Um, why wouldn't they? It's it's uh, everyone's trying to jump on the jump on the wagon, but um, you know we 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 can thank BYD and and MG for getting Tesla to bring their price down. Like yeah, that's played a part. It's a hundred percent played a part. When I bought my Atto, there was seventeen thousand dollars difference between the cheapest Tesla and the car that I got. So in my mind, I got a great deal because yeah. there's nothing in a Tesla that's worth seventeen thousand dollars more. Not a not a thing in that vehicle. Um, again, the, the like the the speed in the Tesla is great, and they do look good. But they got Elon Musk as a spokesperson, which divides so many people. It's just it it's yeah it's it's stupid. So any any company that is keeping Tesla honest, I'm, I'm pretty excited with because in the end we should all hopefully benefit from that. Um, and you know even B, like BYD, they've got some the actually it's not BYD but the the Yang Wang U9 that which is their supercar or their sports car uh, make. It like that looks amazing for for the price tag. Uh, it 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 looks pretty awesome. I love the Lucid Air. Um, yes. I I don't I don't think. We'll see them here anytime soon, but I would love one of them. They just they look beautiful. So if I had to pick, um, you know, top of the line Tesla would be nice, but the Lucid Air would be the car I'd pick if I had a, if I had the money, the budget, and they actually had them here. That's what I'd be going for. So no plans to go back to a petrol ice car? Not, yeah, no, not not. I don't miss it, and every time I've driven one, like when I. When I got my Atto, there was a little bit of damage on one of the side panels. Um, BYD took it back, got it fixed up, and they gave me, or the the panel beaters uh, gave me a uh, ice vehicle for a week. And um, yeah, I wasn't it, I wasn't a fan of it. It smelled it smelled really bad. It's I don't know. It's just the noise that it makes too. Like I'm just so used to eight months of driving a um, EV. Um, it's just such a difference. So. No, I don't. I don't intend on going back to ice anytime soon. Um, I don't tow anything, so there's there's no reason for me. Like I've always had smaller cars, you know, Mazda threes, Corollas. Um, my Outlander was probably the biggest vehicle I had, which was fun for a moment, but um, I really didn't need a vehicle that size anyway. Mm. Is there anything else you wanted to mention or cover off? Um, I do like the fact that in the Atto, every time they bring an update out. The password, the BYD password to allow you to sideload apps keeps getting leaked. I love that. I hope that doesn't change. <laughs> I hope they don't restrict the apps that we can have on there. Like I've got, I've got uh, YouTube, I've got Twitch, I've got Disney, I've got Prime, and they come in handy. They really do come in handy when you're charging or you're just waiting for someone. I can just chuck on some YouTube and just sit back and enjoy while I wait. And, um, yeah, so I'm hoping they we don't lose them because I've I've grown quite used to having them on there now. Well, that's good. I think that's a pretty good review. Thanks, Matthew. Yeah, I think, uh, that covers everything. For someone looking for a BYD, looking for a, just an EV in general, maybe just uh, maybe that's the last tip for the the person sitting on the fence with a petrol car looking at the, just an um, EV, not necessarily the BYD at O three. What's your your key point of advice? Um, have, apart from have a lot of money, yeah, I suppose. Well, that's a it, there's the, what the cheapest one is forty something thousand. The the aura, but um, yeah, it, it's there is a little bit of a learning curve. I think that's one thing I've noticed on the on the Facebook group is there is a you know the the demographic of people buying EVs is on the older side, and um, it's not just a car or it is it's like a it is a computer and um as someone in the it world i love that side of this car but i can also see for some people that is um a little bit stressful but um yeah it, it, it if they can get past that hump that that sort of technology hump that change in how what a car is um 
I think they'll, yeah, I think they'll love it. And, you know, it, it, it doesn't take long for people to get used to how everything, uh, how everything works in it. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, Definitely, definitely join the Facebook group. If you're looking for an addo, definitely join the New Zealand yeah. Facebook group because... Yeah, that's really great. There's so much information in there. It is, it is. It, it, it's probably one of the very few Facebook groups that I, for, you know, for the most part, find it, it, it very useful. You know, every other Facebook group I'm on can get quite toxic at times, um, but they've managed, admins have managed to keep that group quite um quite contained for the most part you can still you can still have your uh position and and defend that position but no one seems to get um irate or anything so uh yeah so um definitely speak and speak to people and 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 drive a few vehicles to find the one that suits okay that's pretty good matthew i think it's uh heaps of information sounds good yeah thanks very much thanks for your time no problem thanks for your time Thanks for watching that video, here's another EV video to check out, and a subscribe to the channel would be great as it helps me get more guests to interview.